Hey Tigers, I'm Madeline Adams. I'm joined here by LSU head basketball coach Will Wade. Thank you so much for joining us, Coach Wade. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, Madeline. All right, so I just kind of wanted to start. So when you got to LSU, you kind of defined yourself as a builder. What in your first season have you built the LSU basketball program into? Well, I think we've got a better foundation. You know, you always, if you're going to be a builder, you better have a rock solid foundation. You better have something solid to build on. You don't want to be building in quicksand. So I think we, we, we were able to establish uh, a very good foundation uh, to what we're doing with our program. I think, you know, we established that we're going to play hard, that our guys are going to be a family and, and be connected. We're going to have a little toughness to us. So we're able to uh, uh, really establish our basic foundation and basic identity in this first year. we got to talk about that recruiting class coming up, fifth in the nation. I mean, just what, are, what do you picture for the future of those guys coming to LSU? Well, I mean, certainly, you know, you can't win the Kentucky Derby on a mule. So you've got to have, you've got to have very, very good players. You've got to have guys that are that are uh, excited to be here. That's the thing that sticks out to me the most about our recruiting class. You can put numbers and all that sort of stuff to it however you want. But the, the, the number one thing is they're all really, really excited about being at LSU. They all have a connection to LSU and a pride about LSU or the state of Louisiana. And so I think that's worth the extra three to 5% sometimes you need to get across the finish line. So we're very, very uh, excited about all the guys. Awesome. We got to touch on the FBI investigation. We've kind of seen the short-term effects of that. What do you picture as the long-term effects of that investigation? Well, you know, I mean, you just you don't know where it's going to go. Um, it's uh, it's changing daily, monthly, weekly. I, I think a couple of the trials are coming up starting in October. So, um, you know, we'll certainly see where see where things go. But I think it's changed the landscape of, of college basketball, and I think it will continue to change the landscape of college athletics. Really, the next. Um, big thing is, is you know, Condoleezza Rice and, and, and her commission uh, in, in, in NCAA basketball and college basketball are going to come out with their findings, and hopefully that'll make a make a big difference uh, yeah. in college basketball moving forward. Uh, so on the first day of practices last season, you had guys show up not even in LSU gear, and you kind of scoffed and said that's why BCU beat y'all last year. You know, do you think you've created a culture in the program now where guys are really proud to wear LSU across their chest? I think so. I hope so. <laughs> uh, I hope we've come a long way in a year for, since that first team meeting and, and first uh, first team get together. But I think our guys have, have a lot more pride about LSU and our basketball program. And, um, you know, hopefully they carry themselves that way as they go around campus and go around town. Yeah. So what really brought you to LSU? What made you say, I want to be the head coach of the LSU basketball team? Well, I think a couple things. One, um, you know, I wanted to be a part of a, a, a great community in LSU. You know, well, we may not have in some things we have in great people and great um, and, and just a, a family atmosphere. And so I thought that was uh, very, very important uh, when you look for somewhere to go. And then, you know, you never want to be somewhere where they haven't been successful before. Now, we haven't yeah. been able to sustain it uh, through certain coaches and, and, and over the longevity. But what Coach Brown did here in the late 80s and 90s, uh, just phenomenal. Coach Brady. Uh, did a good job. Coach Johnson had, had had some good seasons, and Coach Jones had a good first couple years. So you know we've been able to do it in pockets. We just had been able to continually sustain it. And so I think that's a, a challenge that I wanted. That that um, look, they've been able to do it. It's not like you can't win there. People have won there, but can you figure out the code and can you decode things to winning consistently? And that's what we're here to do. Right. You mentioned the community and, and Coach Brown. Have you spoken with him a lot over the past season? Yeah, he's been a great resource. He. He emails me when we're down, and um, he, he always, um, you know, he's really good because he's, you know, he did it for so long and did it for so long here at LSU and did it so well uh, for so long that, you know, there's a lot of, par there's always a parallel situation to what we're going through or what we've gone through that I think, that I think he can, uh, that he can certainly help with. So he was a good resource, uh, you know, for me throughout the year. And, you know, one thing that coaches do and coaches kind of know and what makes Coach Brown so unique is, you know, you don't need people when things are going well. Yeah. You know, everybody wants to talk to you when things are going well, but when things are a little bit down and things are a little bit rough, that's where you need folks. And he really made a point of it, and I really appreciated that this year to reach out when things weren't going as well. He knew I had 10,000 people talking to you when things are good, but he really made a point when we had to suspend some kids and play shorthanded. He told me a story about his team going to Mississippi State and, and some of those things. And so I thought that was, um, you know, just, just – it was great. It's great to continue to build a relationship with him. Yeah. Well, something that went really well was the ULL game um, at, towards the end of the season. I mean, just kind of take me to the end of that game. You're in the locker room. How excited were your guys? What was that our, like? Our guys were excited. You know, you certainly, um, you know, that's what you train for. You train for those moments. It was a supercharged environment. I thought our fans were great. I thought the atmosphere uh, was great. I thought it was really, really 
um, exciting game and, and, and you know as you as you come off and you're victorious you certainly carry that over into the locker room with your guys. Yeah you know you said after the game I stand up for LSU and I think for the first time in a long time LSU fans got to see a coach that really I mean was passionate was energetic throughout the game so what do you think that means to getting more fans packed in the PMAC? Well hopefully they'll see that you know we're gonna be a little bit better <laughs> which you know everybody likes a winner nobody wants to be associated with a loser and be around be around loser, but I, I think we'll be, you know, a little bit, a little bit better. So hopefully that'll help, and hopefully they see a coach that's, that's uh, passionate and a coaching staff and a team that's passionate and plays with, uh, with, with, with tremendous fire and tremendous passion and, and tremendous excitement and enthusiasm uh, about representing LSU, about representing our state since we're the we're, we're the flagship school here in the state of Louisiana, and I, I think that's uh, I think that's very very important. Yeah, what's the best experience that you've had with the LSU fan base? Is there a passionate one? Oh, there. <laughs> They're, uh, they're great. I enjoy everything. I enjoy the football games. Probably the most fun I've had is uh, when we were kind of recruiting fans, I went out to a motorhome lot and just kind of hung out and tailgated with some folks in a motorhome wow. lot. I went around one night, and that was – I was I only had – had I had to go to a recruiting dinner, so I only had about an hour and a half, but I could have stayed out there. I could have stayed out there all night with them. They were watching games and cooking. Everybody was offering great food. And so that, that was a lot of fun. Um, it was out in the, out in the motorhome before – I think it was for the, the, the Auburn football game, but that was, that was a ton of fun. Did you eat any of the food? Oh yeah, we had a lot of the gumbo, <laughs> a lot of the, a lot of uh, a lot of Louisiana uh, classics. Yeah, well, to talk about the Louisiana food, I mean, has your family kind of gotten used to Louisiana living? Have you had your first crawfish boil yet? Oh yeah, our neighbors had a crawfish boil a couple weeks ago. My wife, my wife and daughter went, and, and yeah, we're getting <laughs> we're getting used to, uh, you know, getting used to Louisiana living. My wife and, and daughter love it here. Um, and that's been uh, it's been a been a very very smooth transition because of how great the people have been and how welcoming everybody's been. How difficult was it for you to peel your first crawfish? Uh, <laughs> I still need a little work on that. I still got a little work to do there. That's awesome. What's your typical game day routine like? Do you have any superstitions that you just have to stick to on game day? Well, I don't. I'm not superstitious, but I'm routine oriented. That's what I like to say. So you, you know semantics. But um, no, I mean we do the same thing. Every game day, I do the same thing every game day. One thing that I always do is always eat a tub of popcorn before we come out. <laughs> so while everybody's out there, while our team's out there warming up, I'm back eating popcorn. All right, what uh, kind of popcorn? Just the popcorn Rain? from the, yeah, right, just plain a popcorn. plain popcorn from the, from the concession stand <laughs> here. And so I've always done that. I don't know why, but I guess it, I guess that'd be a routine or superstition. Yeah. Talk about Tremont Waters and how big he was for the LSU basketball program this year. Oh, just, I mean, he's, he's phenomenal. Um, came into this interview, I was watching him work out uh, <laughs> a little bit earlier, and he's, you know, he's just a, a great person, number one, very, very smart person, um, number two, has a, has a tremendous background with his family, and then he's obviously a, just an electric, uh, electric player. So very, very fortunate that, to have him here, very, very excited to to have him here and, and certainly we want to continue to build off this year. I don't think our team this past year, I don't think it's any secret we would have not been nearly as good or nearly as successful uh, without Tremont and um, you know it's our job to continue to get him better. Um, he's certainly um, phenomenal in a lot of areas and we want to improve any areas that, that we need to improve and set him, set him up to be very successful after he leaves LSU because he's certainly done a lot for, for our program. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if this is true, but I heard rumors towards the beginning of the year that you know they were using you to kind of promote the LSU basketball program, and you were kind of like, I'd rather it be the team. You know, what kind of does that say about your coaching style when you'd rather it be the well, team? Well, I think than... it should be about the players. It's not the Will Wade Tigers. It's not you know it's the LSU Tigers, and LSU is our players. I, I really, you know, I kind of argued with marketing over that, and they insisted, and I told them, all right, I'll do it for this one year. But as we move forward, I want our players to be in the forefront of what we're doing. I mean, that's what it's really about is our players. That's why I coach is, is, is for our players, for our fans, for our state. And I think they should be at the forefront of what we're doing. And I need to kind of fade into the background and just do my job and, and let those guys get all the, the, the good publicity. Yeah, I mean, you've come in and you've really wowed a lot of LSU fans. Do you kind of see that as pressure to continue to please them or are you just you know, oh, focused no. I on think it. it's great. I mean, you want people to have high expectations. Our, our expectations are really high, and so I think the fact that it says a lot that maybe we've raised, raised expectations quite a bit in, uh, in, in, in one season. And so, uh, you know, we're very, very uh, excited about what we've got coming up, and, you know, now we've got to back it up and get it done. And I have full confidence in how we do things and what we do that we're going to be able to, we're going to, be able to make it happen. And at the end of the day, that's, uh, that's very, very important. And, hey, we're all in it together. Me, our team, LSU, Louisiana, I mean, we're all in it together. We all want a winner. Yeah. 
yeah. and we all we all want to win big and so that's great we welcome the expectations we're excited about the expectations and we want to meet whatever those expectations are and exceed them a little bit one last question what's one thing that LSU fans might not know about Will Wade it's a good question <laughs> um, I don't I don't know usually I'm, a, I'm actually when I, I'm, I'm pretty quiet uh, <laughs> off the court most of the time you know when I'm not uh, when I'm not in front of our team or not in front of our you know I'm, I'm a little bit of a of, a, of an introvert and kind of like to to stay to myself a little bit sweet well I appreciate you joining us coach Wade I really appreciate it